Hello, this is Jacob Elliott at the University of North Georgia, and uh, today I'm going to be running through the Codebreaker Challenge. Uh, I'm basically going to go through in this first video the first three parts of the challenge because they are pretty simple and uh, things that we can do pretty quickly just in this one video. So a little bit of background in this, uh, we're given the scenario up here where they talk about the organization that is using an Android app called Terror Time in order to send messages back and forth between the members of the organization and uh, organize their efforts. So we're going to be digging into this app and finding ways to first break into it and then masquerade, masquerade as Terror Time users and then eventually decrypt their messages and uh, foil their plans. So the first challenge, we're going to go ahead and get started by actually getting the app itself. And so you can see we're provided with some captured traffic. They've used Wireshark or some kind of uh, program to capture this traffic. And uh, we can go ahead and download that. So when we're looking at it here in Wireshark, you can see all of our TCP traffic and uh, the source and destination. We can see that it's you know some kind of download. And luckily, Wireshark has a really good tool for this. We can actually just go to File, Export Objects, and then HTTP. And any time that you pull this up in Wireshark, it will actually give you a list of all of the file objects in HTTP traffic that appear in that capture. So here we can see there's a terrortime1.apk and a readme.developer. So we'll just go ahead and say save all. And we'll just put them right here in the documents folder. So now I've already completed this challenge, but what it would ask you is for the SHA-256 hash of the APK file and then the credentials of two test clients that are included in this. So if we just go here to my documents folder, we can see our two files. Now the clients are pretty simple to figure out because it just has our test client and uh, password right here. And so we, we can submit that just by simply putting in this full username with a colon and then the secret. And then on the next line, we'll put in the next client ID with a secret. So it looks something like this. And these client IDs are unique for every user. So yours is going to be different from anyone else in your group. So this is what we'll submit for the client credentials. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is get the hash of the APK file that we need to turn in for the other part of the solution. So we just need to go ahead and open up a terminal window. I'll browse to my documents folder. And I can see the APK file there. And now I'm using Kali Linux, so most Linux uh, distributions are going to have these same functions. It'll depend on if you're using Windows or OS X or something. It may be different for you. But you can go ahead and type SHA-256 sum terror time one dot apk And there is the sum that we need to put in. So you can go ahead and go back to this page here and you can put in the client credentials and the APK hash and you have now completed part one. So now for part two we're going to dig into a little bit more detail about the app itself. We can see some of the permissions that are required from Android in order to install and use the app and then also a little bit of information about the certificate that is used to sign the APK file. So the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the app permissions. And what a lot of people aren't aware is that an APK file is actually just a zip file. 
So in a lot of systems, you can actually change this extension to just zip, and your system will hand it, handle it correctly, where you can actually just extract the contents of the file. You won't be able to see the actual code, but you can see some of the supporting things, some configuration files and such. In my case, what I'm actually going to do is use a handy extension that will come in handy later, is a, a program called APK Tool. And you can download this on a lot of different Linux distributions just by saying something like apt-git install APK Tool. And so you can see some of the, uh, the options of this file. But if I say APK Tool, D terror time one dot apk make sure I spell it right then what it'll actually do is it will actually decode the apk itself into a format that we can actually use so the first thing we can look at is our Android manifest XML here we can open it up and it gives some information about the APK and the application itself. And the first thing you see right here at the top is uses permission. And this is an XML document. And it describes the permissions that are needed. So the answers to this are just going to be, we'll go back here and say it requires internet. and it requires accessing the network state. So the next thing that we need to do is see some information about the certificate that's used to sign it. And this one actually confuses a lot of people because there are several different utilities you can use to check the status of the signature of an APK file. But the one that you're going to want to use is called APK Signer and that comes bundled with the Android Studio. So can pull this up here and you can see some of the usage of this but what we're gonna do is we'll say APK signer verify dash dash print certs and then put in our input file and this gives us the information that we need so we can see the SHA-256 digest And then the cert signer name is going to be dev underscore terror time 560389. And that's going to be kind of randomized so that you can't just guess it every time. So it'll be different for everyone. So now we go ahead and hit submit. And we have credit for task two. So for task three is going to be the first one we're actually going to kind of dig into the structure of the app and the underlying systems. And one thing they talk about here is to analyze this database that's been provided by an arrested terrorist. They found it on his device. And we're going to find the addresses of the OAuth server and the XMPP servers. And the OAuth, if you're familiar with OAuth or OAuth2 authentication, uh, is going to be how they actually authenticate users logging in and then XMPP is going to be the chat system that they're using to actually pass messages back and forth. So we can start by go ahead and downloading this database file. So now we can go ahead and open up this database file and we can use an SQLite database browser in order to pull up that file. So let's go to my client DB and you can see some basic structure here. If we go to browse data and then look at clients, we can see that there's some information here about the terrorist that was logged in. And you can imagine this is a row of, of data that came from the terrorist device. So this is going to be their username that they were logged in as before. But what they want to know is the IP address of the OAuth server and the XMPP server. So we can kind of look through this and we see two different addresses. We see register.terrortime.app and chat.terrortime.app. 
And one of the easiest ways that you can do to determine the IP address of either of these things is just to ping it. And in real life applications, you're probably not going to do this because you may not want to alert someone that you're looking at them. So we can go ahead and ping register.terrortime.app and we see that it resolved to this address here. So we'll go ahead and paste that there. Then we can also look at our data and we can see that there's one for chat.terrortime.app. So we'll go ahead and ping chat.terrortime.app and we'll see a different address here. So now we'll go ahead and paste this in here and hit submit. And now we are done with task three.